quarters. The long range wonder weapon capable of throwing mass artillery from the comfort of behind the front. But before setting up and establishing a firing position, there are a few things you must know about controlling these weapons. For you'll be the guy in the squad that everyone screams at, you dickhead, get off the mortar. It'll be your commander's job or squad leader to call in where mortar support's needed. But if you don't aim it in, it's going to be raging fields in the middle of nowhere, killing no one and doing nothing, helping no one in your squad achieve their goals. So there are a few things we must establish before jumping on a mortar or a logistics squad and using these devils. The first being placement. Making sure your mortars are far enough away from the front that they won't be marched on by some lurking enemy and making sure that they're close enough that they'll be optimally able to cover all positions and objectives that the commander or squad leader requires you to barrage. So choosing compounds that are isolated with fences, areas where it's not visible for the mortar tube smoke to be seen are just some of the places that you want to have in order to maintain accurate fire and distance from the enemy. However, getting to these locations is a task of its own. Driving the supply logistics trucks, you'll need to avoid enemy fire and discreetly place yourself in the selected position. Keeping in mind that we'll have to take the trucks back to base in order to resupply logistics equipment and mortar ammunition. Once a location has been agreed upon, the squad leader will bring the truck into position for construction to begin, placing down ordnance for the men around to build. Construction of one of these fortified positions should take no more than a few minutes, with the squad leader making sure there's sandbags covering most entrances and defensive points, so that if a lone wolf or the enemy squad happens to stumble upon your mortar position, you have a fighting chance. Now to the part we all want to see, mortars. There are three different in place type of mortars within the game of Postscriptum. The Germans received the Granat worth of 34, the German mortar with the least range of all mortars within the game. The British, however, find themselves with two mortars, the 3 and 4 inch, both variants that exceed the range of the Granat worth of 42, with the 4 inch significantly having a larger range than any other mortar in the game. With the Germans only receiving one in place mortar and the British receiving two, leaving the Germans at quite a large disadvantage, as both British mortars are able to outrange the German Granat worth of 42, the 4 inch is able to deliver a higher caliber shell, resulting in a bigger explosion. Once hopping on the mortar, you'll be given a range chart as long as a miller radian chart and adjustment of which you'll be able to dial in the miller radian to the range you wish to fire. Once getting this accurately and with the direction of the compass, it'll fire within about a 30 meter splash radius from where you've adjusted to the target. How do we get accurate mortars? Using a mortar calculator. The link will be in the description to this mortar calculator in which it is a drag and drop simple function site. For example, say we were using a German eight centimeter mortar and it was placed somewhere in here, a secure compound a little away from the drill front. We would then place it there, giving us our range circle. And then say we got an order that we need mortars at a certain grid. We can then place a mortar marker, which is also draggable. Um, doing so, that'll give us the direction of which the mortar will fire, as well as the miller radian so that we can get the range right and the compass adjustment angle to make sure that the mortars are firing on target. Like I said before, the splash is generally within a 30 meter radius of where you place that, giving us the most accurate fire and it's an essential if you're going to use mortars. Now not only does this mortar calculator give us exactly the coordinates of which we can fire, it gives a detailed range of each mortar, showing the German 8 centimeter with this, the British with a significantly larger arc, uh, and then the British 4 inch with virtually entire map coverage. It's the most of any mortar in the game. And it's a significant advantage for the British as being able to set further away, um, they can still deliver rounds on target. The British 4 inch also has a delayed flight time due to the larger size of the gun. I'm unsure between the German 8 centimeter and the British 3 inch as they had very similar fire tests, but due to them being smaller in caliber, it varies from the 4 inch. Now to the role of the mortars themselves. There are three main things you'll be doing. Um, smoke screens, laying smoke screens and blinding enemies from seeing you, allowing your men to cross open fields or taking away visibility from the enemy's line of sight. Second is barraging targets, dropping their heads. As we can see here, rounds coming in. These are barrage targets when there's dirt flung in the air, fragments along the ground, loud noises that stops communication between the squads. They're basically running and ducking for cover in their foxholes and trying to get away from it. The main effectiveness of this is not just killing the enemy. That's actually more of a secondary 
Uh, the main effect is that it'll stop them moving, it stops communication and just stops their game as a whole. If, if you're under mortifier, their first instinct is to run and hide and it's a, an instinct of self-preservation. And we can see here, this is what we're going to be doing. We're mortaring an in-place position. We can see two four inches firing up in the air, the larger caliber British. And we'll show you the effects of what it can have on a, an in-place position. We've got the in-place position in our sights as the mortars now come down. Rounds start landing around them, scattering fragments everywhere. You can see dust flickering up, uh, explosions everywhere. Not only does this disorientate the enemy in terms of their strategic position, it basically puts them in renderable from firing back. We see here that there's a mixed phosphorus, so throwing a few smoke rounds into the target if you've got multiple mortars uh, when you are barraging, they are phosphorus, so it will damage them if they get caught in it. Not only that, it just adds to the disorientation and confusion. You're blinding your opposition. They don't know whether they're getting fired upon from a smoke mortar or a HE. All adding to the effect of disorientating. Now that's mostly effective when you've got multiple mortars. Now we'll move into the next one, which is smoke screens. So we can see here there's an open field and imagine your squad leaders called out that you need smoke to cross without being cut down by enemies. You'd be given the coordinates, then the smoke would deploy, phosphorus would eject, you'd wait for a few rounds of plume before the squad would move. But as you can see here from the mortar roll, only four rounds have been dropped and it's blinded the entire field, making it incredibly effective at stunting the enemy's vision. You could have an entire two, three, four squads moving behind that without the opposition even knowing. On top of this, you can perform what is known as a creeping barrage slowly moving the distance of your mortars towards a target. For example, with this smoke plume you'll see on the next few shells that come down, there'll be more that land closer that allow the squad then to move forward. The vice versa applies for when you're barraging. You can crawl towards a target, crawl away from a target, maximizing the chances of hitting them. In this instance, it's mainly designed to give more smoke coverage. Using all the things we've taught you here today, you'll be able to jump into Postscriptum in the logistics squad and perform the duty of a mortar team. In doing so, you'll be able to drop smoke to cover men, barrage enemy points, suppress enemies, and delay them using the round techniques that we've showed you here. Combining all these things, you'll quickly become the commander and squad leader's favorite weapon of choice on the field. And in doing so, you could very well be the deciding factor that wins a game. Until next time, everyone, and see you on the front.